continuously scan the threat landscapes? Of course. I think certification is just uh, one of the parameters that we look at. Maybe one thing that I must say is there are many different types of roles uh, in the cyber industry. Hello to all our viewers. Welcome to another episode of CyberSec Career Chat. I am your host, Damien. Today, we are pleased to have Ronghua from GovTech to come on board to this episode to discuss on some career questions we have for him today. Uh, let's get our conversation started. Hello, Ronghua. You know, it is a pleasure to have you on board to our this episode of CyberSec Career Chat. Uh, to keep off, keep off these sessions, you know, uh, the, every question they always ask all the CyberSec <laughs> professionals, share with us your journey into the cybersecurity industry. All right, thanks, uh, Damien. Um, I think uh, my journey in the cybersecurity industry has been quite an exciting one, where I get to expose to different type of uh, cybersecurity work, uh, be it on cryptography, malware reverse engineering, great teaming, and uh, for now, uh, even to some aspect of uh, policy development. Right? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, it's been quite a journey. Um, and you know, with so much years of experience that you have accumulated, you must be quite a magician now, you know. <laughs> and you know, we are already halfway through 2021. What do you expect for the next six months in terms of cybersecurity trend? Um, okay, so I believe for the next six months, uh, we will continue to see some of the uh, uh, familiar threats uh, uh, that we have been seeing but continue to evolve to become more sophisticated. Um, take for example, we will continue to see uh, malware threats. We will continue to see uh, cloud security threats as well as uh, some aspect of uh, supply chain threats. Right, and maybe for, for malware threats, um, we also see an increase of uh, leveraging on social engineering to social engineer uh, manipulate uh, victims into either divulging confidential information or installing malware into their systems. Uh, this will continue to happen and uh, more interestingly, we'll see uh, some aspect of the malware will work on uh, evading uh, the current detections. And as for the, um, the cloud security threats, uh, I think it's a natural uh, progression that we will encounter this kind of risk as we onboard more systems to the mm -hmm. internet. Right, and, uh, and we probably would also see more cases of like data breaches, yep. uh, ransomware that happens on the cloud. Uh, and a majority of the time is uh, also because of uh, insecure, insecure coding practices or even like misconfigurations of those systems that leads to such breaches. And uh, perhaps last but not least, um, Supply chain, uh, even though it's like sort of like recently hyped and heard, heard of, uh, uh, it is not something that's very new. Uh, but that said, uh, we'll continue to see more, you know, uh, of the advanced attackers targeting at uh, unsuspecting vendors uh, to expand their reach uh, in terms of like the compromise into uh, uh, the the organizations of their targets, and perhaps uh, they will look into. Um, uh, compromising uh, products, mm -hmm. uh, open source libraries, as well as potentially developers. Right? Yeah, I think you know, as you mentioned during your, you know, your answers, there's quite a wide spectrum <laughs> of threats that we're expecting. Indeed. And, yeah, and uh, with threats, you know, evolving as you mentioned mm. uh, with your answers, how do you get your team uh, to scale up with the relevant up-to-date skills? Yeah, uh, I, I think one, one big part uh, about uh, cyber is that uh, we shouldn't be satisfied with where we are at present and should continuously scan the threat landscapes to help us understand where are the gaps in our defenses as well as uh, identifying areas uh, of skills that we have to pick up. For example, aligning with uh, some of the digital initiatives uh, we, we recognize there's a need to uh, uh, improve or you know, enhance our skills in uh, cloud security, mm -hmm. uh, enhance our skills in uh, malware, and as well as uh, penetration testing or even vulnerability research. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so these are some of the areas that we think that uh, we have to continue build our skills in. Okay, um, you know, uh, with your level itself, you build your own team. Uh, you definitely have your strategy in building a team. You know, uh, what expect in skills or characters do you look as when when you're hiring one into the company? Okay, uh, I okay. So so I think if you are talking about. Um, uh, identifying the correct candidate uh, when hiring, right? Uh, some of the things that I look out for is actually uh, the personality number one. Uh, whether the person uh, has uh, uh, correct moral, right? Okay. So uh, I think it's important uh, that as we equip with more or deeper skills, uh, we need to use them for the right cause, right? On top of that, uh, we are also looking for individuals uh, with strong computing fundamentals, right? Uh, and that is helpful because, um, like I mentioned, uh, it's a continuous learning journey, right? Uh, with those uh, a strong computing fundamentals, it enables them to continually pick up new skills that is uh, required uh, for the future journey, right? Yeah. So, so these are two of the areas that I look out for when uh, identifying candidates. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, you know, as we know that uh, certification, you know, mm. has been kind of a boom in the cybersecurity <laughs> industry, and everybody is talking about getting certified and yes. stuff like that. Yes. What if one candidate is not certified in one case, but has very strong GitHub uh, repository and also industry involvement? Would one be considered in hiring? Of course. Uh, I think certification is just uh, one of the parameters that we look at, but not the only parameter, right? Uh, and very often at times when we look at certification, it's more of uh, a baseline requirement rather than uh, a full demonstration of the individual's capability, right? Uh, suppose if an individual has the uh, very uh, good portfolio, be it uh, demonstrated through his uh, he or she or her GitHub uh, a repo or a portfolio of vulnerabilities that he or she has uh, discovered, uh, that would be equally useful. But of course, uh, one thing that I must also uh, re-emphasize is other than skills, we are also looking at persons uh, with correct character and personality. Yeah, yeah. I think that's something that we addressed <laughs> before that in the issue. I think, I think yeah. it's still character skills. I think character is still a main thing where, that's right. where we come into hiring. That's right. Yeah. As we see that, you know, purple teaming is mm. also booming in this industry. Yeah. Do, do you think that, you know, blue teams or red teams should learn their skills vice versa? What's your thoughts about that? <laughs> uh, I, will, I will see that uh, the cyber industry will get uh, more and more colorful, right? <laughs> so right now we have red, we got blue, we got purple, and perhaps uh, sometimes down the route we get uh, orange, yellow, and whatever, right? But these are all uh, in a way, trying to represent different spectrum of work that we are working on. I think ultimately, uh, we as a cybersecurity specialist shouldn't be overly distracted by how the industry uh, uh, position uh, certain, uh, you know, maybe products or, or skill sets or whatever. Right? We, we should be very focused in terms of like uh, what interests you. You know, perhaps uh, uh, you know. Um, if you are a blue teamer, it's nothing wrong to you know start off, uh, you know, uh, focusing on developing uh, blue skills. Maybe along the way, as you get uh, uh, you know more experience in blue skills, yep. then you start to you know uh, cross uh, to learn other skills. Uh. So it could be red skills, uh, uh, which is like you know hacking skills, uh, or even purple skills. Uh, could be uh, using a little bit of uh, red skills to help you uh, achieving your defense, right? So, so I don't think um, uh, uh, we should be bounded uh, and it should be largely, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, derived based on what your interest is and continue to expand further from there. Yeah. Okay. But do you think that is it because uh, that companies expect everybody to have all the skills that you have? <laughs> That's why Purple Team comes into play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I, would, I would think that all companies would expect uh, <laughs> and we would wish to actually hire uh, ideal candidates, 
But in the reality is that uh, yes, there is an ideal uh, uh, in mind. Uh, uh, we may not be able to uh, get uh, one with uh, fully equipped with the skills that we wanted uh, for. So therefore, as an organization, we need to identify uh, what exactly is the skills that the person already have, what is the potential that the person can develop into, and whether or not you know, do we have the growth opportunity for that person? Because at the end of the day, it's not just about fulfilling a company's objective, but it is also about developing the purpose, uh, the person uh, to, to build their portfolio, to develop their skills, uh, you know, uh, as they progress in, in their career. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, to summarize, you know, mm. the, the stuff you mentioned in terms of developments, you know, and skills, characters, you know, mm. what is your final advice for the cybersecurity personnel in this industry that, that can help them to advance in their career? Yeah, um, maybe one thing that I must say is there are many different types of roles uh, in cyber industry, right? Don't be too fixated that uh, for cyber, uh, blue skills, uh, blue specialists, blue team specialists or red team specialists are the only way out. There are also other uh, roles where you can play. Uh, you can play as a cyber risk uh, uh, you know, uh, assessment specialist mm -hmm. or even cyber program uh, managers. There are many different kinds of roles. I think more importantly, uh, you need to identify what interests you and where your strength is. Right? If you can leverage on your strength, uh, definitely for whichever kind of roles that you're looking into, will have a progression uh, uh, path for you. Right? Okay. Um, that's a very good insightful <laughs> summary. Uh, before we round off this whole session, yes. you know, um, what do GovTech has for the community for the remaining six months? <laughs> yeah, that's an exciting journey indeed uh, uh, that we will continue. Uh, I think uh, we will work on three aspects. Uh, for the first, uh, we will continue to uh, engage our cyber communities to participate in our bug bounty programs, mm -hmm. where uh, we, we we hope to you know tap on the uh, white hat community to help discover bugs in our systems as one. And the second is uh, our team will continue to speak in uh, public events uh, or conferences, not just to share uh, our thinking and thoughts, but also to learn from the uh, community experts, right? To provide us with feedbacks and help us to improve in the things that we are uh, working on. Yep. Uh, yeah. And last but not least, uh, we will also uh, continue to work on uh, delivering and as well as maintaining some of the open source tools. Uh, take for example, recently uh, we have also published on AutoWaps, uh, which help pen testers to, you know, uh, hopefully improve their uh, effectiveness as well as efficiency in their conduct of a pen testing. Yeah. Oh, so that's, I think, largely these are the three areas that we have for the community. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Ronghua, for, you know, participating in this episode of CyberSec Career Chat. As what Ronghua say, AutoWorks is on Pentester Academy TV. Do <laughs> go and watch it and uh, enjoy what they have done for the Pentesting uh, community. Thank you so much once again for your time. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Hey, thank thank you. you very much, Damien. Thank Appreciate you. your time as well. That's a wrap. Thank you, Ronghua, once again for coming on board to this episode of CyberSec Career Chat. For more information of the initiative and hiring methods uh, that GovTech has for the community, please look at the video description below. Don't forget to subscribe to Pentester Academy TV for more industry insights and Pentester Academy learning materials. That's all folks and stay tuned to the next episode of CyberSec Career Chat. Stay safe everyone. <laughs> <laughs>